A manager at the logistics and shipping company known as DHL has resigned from his position and has decided to join hourly employees in their push to form a union. And he made this decision after overhearing his colleagues refer to said workers as inmates in a prison. So Ryan Doyen was offended by that enough to step down from his professional managerial class position and show solidarity for the workers here. Now he worked at DHL for about five years and had been promoted to a manager position at the company's Cincinnati and Northern Kentucky International Airport Hub. It's also known as CVG. Now he heard degrading comments about the workers and this dismissive attitude and other issues with the management that really, really bothered him. And so here's what he says. I kept hearing ill speaking of the hourly employees. Then one day I overheard a conversation between two managers that they needed to take back the hub that they referred to as a prison and that they are the wardens taking back the prison from the inmates. On that note, I did not want to be part of management anymore because I couldn't idly sit by and allow managers to speak ill of the people I call my friends and colleagues. It didn't sit right with me as a human. So Doyen wrote his resignation letter from his managerial role and returned. He actually took a demotion. He requested a demotion because he wanted to go from manager to hourly employee. Now, he started speaking with union organizers and also getting involved in the union effort, which he actually had not initially supported. So DHL employees, just to give you some details about this particular hub, DHL employs about 3,000 employees at this CVG hub with about 900 of the workers currently seeking to form a union with Teamsters Local 100. The Teamsters already represent about 6,000 out of the 10,000 workers at DHL within the United States but not the Cincinnati hub. So the election date has yet to be determined by the National Labor Relations Board. But just to give you a few more details, Doyen said workers were planning or were pushing to unionize at DHL for issues ranging from job security, representation at disciplinary hearings, improved pay and benefits, a voice on safety issues and working conditions. He described the work as dangerous and grueling with workers subjected to extreme temperatures in summer and winter months, often without air conditioning or heating in vehicles. And Waz, I know you have some experience with a shipping and logistics company unionizing or having a union. Talk about that a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I was a part time worker at UPS. We were Teamsters, go Teamsters. Um, and I mean, for me, it meant everything. Uh, we we actually got full benefits as part time workers uh, because you were in the union. They couldn't just fire you whenever they wanted to. The, as, so long as you showed up to work on time every single day, um, you could you could be guaranteed to have a job um, and th- therefore draw a paycheck. And I think the most important thing about union outside of negotiating fair wages and benefits and things of that nature. It's just a sense that management can't just push you around. Mm. They can't just treat you like some piss on piss in. even somebody like me who was insignificant. I was, you know, I was I worked on the sword aisle. I wasn't some big deal at the company. You got treated with respect and dignity. And you know, when I, when I hear this homie say that, you know, he hears the managers referring to them to to the workforce as a bunch of inmates in some kind of prison. To me, that just flows down from upper management, mm-hmm. right? Middle management gets their barking orders from upper management, and that culture permeates the entire job site, where these people clearly have contempt for their workforce, and that was demonstrated there. So, shouts to this guy for not wanting to be a part of that. Yeah, it's such a such a great point. I mean, the fish rots from the head down. And so in this case, you know, you have a manager stepping down because he hears other fellow managers saying terrible things about the hourly, you know, wage earners, hourly workers. And I love the point that you made about how it's not just about the financial benefits and representation that comes along with being part of a labor union. 
It's knowing that you're not alone and that there's there's like safety in numbers, right? You have an entire group of people along with the union representation sticking up for you and representing your best interest. Should some sort of conflict arise, whether it be with the working conditions or potentially even threats of getting fired, right? You hear all these stories from the right wing regarding various employees who are persecuted, who are fired because of their political leanings or political beliefs. Well, a good fix to that issue is to unionize the workforce because then you have representation. So an employer can't just fire you without any, you know, anyone representing your best interest to, you know, make sure that it's not some frivolous firing or, you know, motivated by some other unacceptable reason. Um, so let's give give you guys some more details. So though the union organize through the union organizing campaign, uh, workers have filed as many as 17 unfair labor practice charges against DHL, alleging intimidation, which is unsurprising, surveillance, also unsurprising, and retaliation from management for union activities. Uh, Stephen Fightmaster, an hourly worker at CVG, argued employees at the non-unionized sites were treated much worse than their unionized counterparts and said he and others had been harassed by the company. Here's a few quotes from him, he says, I've been followed off the property by DHL corporate security. I was followed to my house on one occasion. I was followed to a union meeting on another. And it's just the constant harassment and intimidation tactics used by both DHL corporate security and their security contractor. As hourly employees, we've been referred to as inmates by managers. The, uh, the phrase used was uh, they are the ones taking back the ramp from the inmates. Uh, we're not just respected out there, we don't have any dignity or we don't have the dignity and respect in the workplace that we deserve and people are getting fed up with it. And you know, Doyen agrees with him on that uh, and none of this surprises me. Uh, earlier this week, we did a story about a, an employee from one of these major rail companies who had suffered a pretty serious back injury, needed to recuperate and get better. And during that time, I believe it was Southern Pacific, they decided to hire a private investigator to spy on this guy to make sure that he doesn't leave his house while he is getting better. Well, he left to go get groceries and they fired him for that. It's insane. Yeah, this is exactly what we're talking about. These intimidation tactics are as old as the system itself. This is this is what management does. And you have to think to yourself, as one person, as an individual, the idea that you could come to the table with the suits and think that you would ever get a fair hearing on anything is laughable. They will laugh you right out of the room when you are by yourself. It's impossible, it's an impossible mountain to climb. However, uh, when you bring your grievances as a collective with the threat of work stoppages, i.e. hurting the bottom line, uh, your your demands are um, made more serious uh, with that. So that's, that's just the name of the game, honestly, Anna. Absolutely, and just a quick correction, it's Union Pacific. I think I said Southern Pacific for some reason, but Union Pacific was a rail company uh, that is now facing a lawsuit from that employee who says he got fired after they spied on him. But yeah, everything you're saying is 100% right and the only time workers had the power to change anything not just in their workplace but policy wise uh, legislatively was through forming unions and being able to apply effective pressure against the executive branch and also Congress so something to think about you know oftentimes we think that we can find some shortcut by electing the right people but you got to do the work and really there are no short there are no shortcuts for lasting change. So more power to these DHS, DHL workers. Hopefully they get the union that they want. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun, but you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video, thank you.